we're at uh, a, a farm, an aquaponics farm, uh, with uh, Dr. Wen Hao Sun, and uh, he's got a product and some knowledge and expertise that is really going to make a difference uh, in our state in Hawaii. And um, we'll, we'll get into that as, as we go, but right now I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Wen Hao Sun. Yeah. My name is Wen Hao Sun. Uh, I'm the owner of uh, Marine Agri Future. Uh, we are here to produce uh, uh, sea asparagus uh, as well as the algo and uh, in an ecosystem. So what, what's interesting about this is you've got this uh, completely self-contained uh, product back here. We have in, in the backdrop, we've got, uh, we've got the sea asparagus growing on these rafts. Right. And below that, you've got the ogo Ogos. growing. In between them, you've got the tilapia. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit, of how, how did okay. how'd you come to be here? And how did you get to this product? And how does it work so well together? All right. This is, it has been happening for 10 years. Uh, uh, and if 10 years ago, so we thought, uh, you know, how we can do business uh, or do agriculture without the uh, fresh water, without the uh, arable land. So, and the idea is uh, ask the ocean, ask the coastal land, uh, coastal water. So this is how it works out. So you grow plants, terrestrial plants, not ocean plants, uh, not sea plants, uh, terrestrial plants. Uh, on the platform, in salt water, hydroponically, so you don't take a space uh, which is a regular land. Uh, also, you don't use uh, fresh water, use salt water. So that can solve the problem. If we had a fresh water deficient, we had uh, arable land deficient. Now, most plants don't grow in yeah. salt water, though. So right. how did you get there? Most plants doesn't grow water. So we, uh, working on the project, that discover you know, one of the Hawaii native plants is really salt tolerant which is called akuli kuli. I will mention that later. Uh, that is uh, one plant, but other plants uh, is salt tolerate. Uh, sea asparagus is another one. Uh, in fact, uh, there's many, many research, uh, more than 30 years, uh, at the 10 years now, more than 40 years, uh, people study the salt tolerate plants. And they selected thousands, thousands of plants after that, and a couple of plants is really salt tolerate. Okay. Okay. By uh, with the new technology, modern technology, we'll be able to, you know, bring some uh, uh, less salt tolerant plants to be become more salt tolerant plants. So that's the end of the future. Okay. So you you find a product, that, uh, a, a plant species that that does a, a certain job, cleaning water, for example. Right. And I think we're going to talk a lot about that uh, in this interview. Um, this water apparently was in pretty bad shape. Uh, it was really dirty, and and the plants itself cleaned up the water? How'd you, how'd you get the water clean? The water clean is by nature, you know. When we grow sea asparagus, uh, the water getting clear, clear, clear. And once the water getting clear, the ogo start grow up because they get a nice environment. Uh, the lights going down, the ogo grow up. I mean, they grow up, it does not mean I cultivate them. They just naturally grow up. Hmm. In this area. So you got another product as well. Yeah, you we got, got the sea asparagus product. and the ogo. Yeah, and then when the ogo grow up, the uh, whole environment change. Whole tank uh, getting uh, oxygen rich environment. So your sea asparagus growing well, and then the fish is growing well. So we supply fish. Yeah. And then when you grow the fish, and then the ogo is getting better because they got uh, organic uh, nutrients. Uh, and then sea asparagus got uh, organic uh, nutrients. Uh, so the system uh, become uh, self-sustaining, mm -hmm. uh, gas uh, circulation, CO2 uh, circulation, oxygen circulation, and then nutrients uh, circulation. So we don't have uh, we we don't have uh, effluent out the system. Only the water in, no water out. You don't have to fertilize. You don't yeah. have to clean. You don't have it, to. Yeah, you, you don't have products to. Products running. Uh, but, mm -hmm. Harmoniously. Is this the uh, sea asparagus here? Yeah, this is the sea asparagus. Uh, uh, it looks like a mini asparagus. You can close look at it, mini asparagus, but tastes like a sea. That's why we prefer to call this a sea asparagus. Uh, many people taste uh, it, it, the kind of salt. It, it's salty and uh, also a little bitter. Uh, a bitter. This is the one we sell in the, in the market. Uh, you can see this is a four ounce. Uh, the four ounce sea asparagus container also has a, a recipe on there. We call Lomi sea asparagus, which is sea asparagus mixed with tomato onion. 
Oh. Many customers taste it. They say it tastes like a Lomi salmon without salmon. So we say, okay, we put this name, Lomi Sea Asparagus. That's excellent. You mentioned uh, something before we started uh, taping. You mentioned the, um, the, that it's really it's, it's a, a wonderful salt substitute. Yes. It tastes salty. It's yeah. got a nice salt flavor. Yeah. But you're saying that you can use this in place of salt and have actually healthful benefit? Yes. Uh, this is uh, the sea asparagus. is a salty, and then they are very healthy. Uh, very healthy. First of all, they has uh, all the ocean mineral, uh, all the ocean mineral, and including the trace mineral, which uh, you may not find in the land plant, land vegetable, which is very important our body to our body. Mm -hmm. And then this salt is not only sodium; uh, it's a mixture of uh, mineral, high amount of potassium, you know, calcium, magnesium. Iodine is a natural, inorganic form, which is very important. Form is important. You don't have to have a lot, but if the form is organic form, for body, easy to take up. Mm -hmm. It's very efficient for using. Mm. That's very important. And um, so it's also mineral balance. Uh, you have uh, sodium, potassium, other phosphorus, uh, other uh, 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 and, and minerals. So it balance uh, go to your body. It doesn't cause uh, kind of shock. Uh, sodium shock. It doesn't have a sodium okay. shock. And that's why yeah, for those people you don't eat uh, sodium, you can take this because it's a balance. Also, it's an uh, organic uh, bioactive form, bioactive form, so it gets into your body and utilize it. Okay. Just keep in mind that everybody needs salt. You have to have salt. Yeah, you right? have to have yeah. salt, but you, what kind of salt you choose? This is the most healthy salt because when you take this one, not only take a salt, but also take a mineral. Uh, take all the, uh, other nutrition like vitamin and amino acid, protein, and a special antioxidant and a nutrition supplement. What I discovered is that this one has a lot of what it called trimethylglycine. Okay. It's a miracle stuff uh, help your uh, protect your uh, heart, protect your liver, improve your mood, and improve your energy, even help you weight loss. That's amazing. It's got, <laughs> it's got so many benefits in it. Um, however, this also ties in with the water cleansing. We talked about water cleansing now. Right. We, earlier today, we walked out there, and th you've got this uh, raft of, uh, of the akuli kuli you right. mentioned before, which is, uh, uh, I believe means succulent in, right. in Hawaiian or something. So this akuli kuli has properties similar to this and actually even better right. for water cleansing. Do you want to talk about that and yeah. talk about how sure, sure. you could bring in the Alawai Canal Okay, story. let me go back to this technology. The technology we created 10 years ago in the University of Hawaii is called marine agriculture. Marine agriculture means to grow terrestrial plant in the salt water, uh, hydroponically, in salt water. It's a terrestrial plant. There's many, many for, uh, purpose. Uh, number one is uh, clean up your environment, uh, coastal environment, okay. use plants. Uh, second is for agriculture. Also, you can for other medicine purpose. So, uh, first application of uh, uh, this technology happened in 2004. Uh, we use this technology, use uh, one uh, Hawaiian native plant, a kuli kuli, to clean up uh, um, Alawai Canal. Uh, that's the demonstration project funded by the federal government. So I, I think most people who have been are familiar with Waikiki yeah. and the Alawai. Uh, they know that it's for years and years has been a not very clean. Right. But when that project came in, I remember that, and I remember it cleaned it up pretty well and, right. and pretty quickly. Very pretty so quickly. So how, how's that work again? It works uh, because there's a phytoremediation principle. Uh, the akuli kuli uh, is the, first of all, they are very salt tolerated. They grow in this kind of environment. Not too many plants can grow in salt water, but they are. They grow in this water almost the same as uh, salinity as the ocean. And then they generate lots, lots of the roots. This is the plant. Yeah, this is the akuli kuli plant, by the way. Uh, this is the top part. Uh, this is the leaf. The leaf is a photosynthesis, but they generate a lot of roots. The roots is directly cleans up water. Uh, number one, they can absorb nutrients, so they reduce the nutrients, uh, f including the um, ammonia and nitrogen, phosphorus. Uh, also, they can accumulate uh, the heavy metal, a uh, so little heavy so, metal. So there. water passing through this with the, 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 the roots going through, the water passing through it almost instantly absorbs it. Instantly absorbs it. Uh, absorb it. 
Yeah, this is uh, very important. And then also, they will accumulate, uh, absorb the suspension particle. Uh, suspension particle is uh, including the mineral and the organic parts. So when you uh, absorb the suspension particle, the water getting clear. Uh, cl clarity is uh, improved. That's why so you include clarity. Another thing they improve clarity is uh, clarity is they kill the microalgae, the green algae. Uh, this is uh, through some uh, remote control. Uh, this the acrylic has a function they can kill or suspend, uh, suppress the algae growth. That's why in the long term, you will see the water and we're getting clear and clear. So we've got the alawai as, as a proven example. That was a demonstration. The alawai was cleaned by this right. uh, project, which you helped spearhead. And now, for the money quote, for those of us who live on the North Shore and we want to support agriculture, is uh, Lake Wilson, the Wahiwa yeah. Reservoir. Um, the water coming out of there is not very clean. Right. Uh, it only allows us to grow tree crops at presently. Uh -huh. But if we could get to a higher quality of water, we could return to growing more fresh fruits and vegetables. And, 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 and the North Shore could really re uh, return or get to a, a, the ideal of growing vegetable crops. So you're interested now, we've been talking with you, and in the past session, there were some bills introduced uh, by Senator De La Cruz and yes. Representative uh, Oshiro to create a phytoremediation project for Lake Wilson. Right. Now, tell us about that. How, how, how successful or how optimistic are you on that? Because oh, yeah. that gets me really excited when I start thinking of a practical use that's going to really affect this whole state. Right. I, I think uh, you know, this is a very promising project because, number one, we have this... Uh, technology demonstrating in the Alawai Canal, which is a more, di more stressful condition. Uh, the salt water, more polluted uh, area, and then it has a high wave, uh, high, uh, high current. So this is uh, the example, and uh, take advantage there. You can apply this uh, to the fresh water. Akulikuli can go in the fresh water. Okay. Most people know this is a fresh water, it is a garden ground cover. You always, uh, 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 irrigate them water, fresh water. Yeah. So they can go in fresh water. Uh, they also generate a lot of roots, uh, cleaned up water in the fresh water. So they can do both. That's number one. And uh, number two, the remember, you know, I if you grow something in the water, we don't want them uh, overwhelming and then cause a disaster. This is the one cannot do that. Because if you throw a curriculum in the water, they cannot grow. They only grow in the platform which we are designing. That's the way we control them. You can actually them grow in any shape, but they can grow by themselves. That's very good. So they will not cause uh, uh, overgrow and then reduce the oxygen and toxic yeah, to the fish. I think we That's all remember. Very interesting. It's not like a water hyacinth and the other firm. That's Sylvania yeah, molesta Sylvania we molesta. remember so clearly. That's the way we uh -huh. take this. And then they can clean the water and then same as we did in Alawai Canal. Uh, they can control the algae, make the water clarity, improve it. And then they can reduce the smell. Even you stink smell, they can kill that. Uh, kill the bacteria, improve uh, the quality. And even you can swim it, uh, if you do it real well. Oh, man. And then even I believe you can do agriculture, hydroponic uh, at the end. Because you can clean the water. I love your passion for it. I love the science you've brought to it. And I love the practical nature that the, this really looks like a, uh, exactly the right product at the right time for where we need to take this state.